verses 11 and 12. You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I give you thanks forever. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sandy Haynes, and as your pulpit assistant this morning, it is my honor to welcome you all to worship here at South Aiken Presbyterian Church. We are glad that God has brought you here to worship with us. Please take a moment, if you haven't already, to sign in on the friendship pads found along the center aisle, and we thank you for doing that. Here are some announcements about upcoming events. This coming Wednesday, we have Food for Thought number two. Jason will be leading a lesson at six uh, about shining God's light into this world. And at 5.30 in the gym, we will have dinner, which will be ham and mac and cheese. Um, a reminder to staff and officers that next Saturday, October 28th, from 9 to noon in the gym, we're having a visioning retreat for all officers and staff. So all the new coming and now serving officers should come. And um, also next Saturday, the 28th, in here in the sanctuary, it's the first day for registration of the families coming to be serviced by Secret Santa this year, which is our outreach to bring Christmas joy to the needy in Aiken County. If you need more information about that, you can look on page 15 in your bulletin or talk to Karina McGee. And next Sunday, October 29th, is Connection Sunday. So following the service, we will gather in the gym for um, the fellowship committee uh, bringing us some hot cider and donuts. And uh, we will hear from Coach Ike, who is the coach of the Grizzlies basketball team that has been using our gymnasium to provide uh, a positive outlet to the youth of our community. And it is my great pleasure this morning to welcome Monika Kosen. She likes to be called Mo. She is a musician and singer with a passion for God's ministry, her ministry to God and her faith in God. She has pursued music studies at both Okaloosa Walton Community College and Pensacola Junior College. She is currently the music minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in beautiful Gulf Breeze, Florida. Um, before her role as worship leader there, she has spent most of her life as a professional singer. She is now a full-time online student at Loyola, I knew I was going to stumble, Loyola University in New Orleans. She will graduate next year in the spring of 2024 with a degree in ministry and theology. She was here for our seminar yesterday, which was so special. And we hope you'll be coming again. And now, if there's no more announcements, Thank you, Lynn. Hearing no more, other, uh, no other announcements. Let us worship God.
If I told you my story, you would hear hope that wouldn't let go. And if I told you my story, you would hear love that never gave up. And if I told you my story, you would hear life, but it wasn't mine. If I should speak, then let it be of the grace that is greater than all my sin, of when justice was served and where mercy wins of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of him. If I told you my story, you would hear victory the enemy and if I told you my story you would hear freedom that was one for me and if I told you my story you would hear life overcome the grave if I should speak then let it be of the grace that is greater than all my sin of when justice was served and where mercy wins of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of him. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. For the grace that is greater than all my sin, of when justice was served and where mercy wins, of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of the grace that is greater than all my sin, of when justice was served and where mercy wins, of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of him. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of him. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Lord, bless the Lord's name. Tell of the Lord's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations, God's marvelous works among all the peoples. 
For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. The Lord is to be revered above all gods. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us join together in the prayer of confession as printed in the bulletin, followed by a time of silent personal confession. Oh, sing to, oh, sorry, wrong one. Who, who is in, sorry, roadmap. Glorious, gracious God, we confess that change creates fear and loss. Empower us to manage our fear and loss with the Holy Spirit, not letting the feelings dominate our lives. Help us deepen our faith and be led by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, instead of unbalanced emotions. Amen. Join me in the assurance of forgiveness. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Jesus Christ. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ rules in power for us. And Christ prays for us. Anyone who believes in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. No, we are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. As you see and hear the water being poured into the font, remember you are given the gift of the Holy Spirit to live as a new creation.
of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please share signs of peace and welcome to those seated around you. Come forward for the children's moment with Jimmy Bunch. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are all of you doing? Y'all want to come down here so you can see. Come, come this way. Come this way. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Do any of you knew, know what a persimmon is? You know, and, and I hope not. How many of you older children out there know what a wild persimmon tastes like? Do you remember? Oh, yes, yes. There are two types of persimmons, and they grow on trees. And I have a tree, I have a tree in my backyard, and that is a persimmon. It's a fruit, and it's kind of hard like an apple. And this... Yeah, it, it does look a little bit like a tomato. Yeah, it does. But it's very hard. You want to feel it? Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Yep. Okay. So, I have a persimmon tree in my backyard. And I, all I did was plant it. I don't do anything else to it. I don't have to work to do anything. All it does is grow. In the springtime, it puts on a flower. And then the fruit... And I pick these usually after it freezes in the fall. But they're starting to get ripe. Now, let me go back to a wild persimmon. There's two different kinds. And a wild persimmon is about that big. And if you eat one of them or just chew on it just a little bit, you will never forget how bitter it is. Ah, you can't spit enough to get it out of your mouth. You can... And you cannot, it, it is just something you will always remember. And if you eat one of these, you might remember it for a different reason, because they're very good. And God grows this tree in my backyard. I don't have to do anything to it. And so you know what I enjoy doing? I enjoy taking what I have and sharing it and share God's love with somebody else. How many, how many of you have something that you share that's yours with someone else? Your cars? Okay. Okay. You can share a smile. That's a good thing. And so what I want us to do this morning, Caleb, I'm going to give you my persimmons. There's my persimmons. I'm going to give them to you because I want, you to sh I want to show God's love to you. Now, do you have anything, why, how could you show God's love to somebody else? By giving, it to someone else? By giving it to someone else. Why don't you go give it to somebody else?
let's always remember what we have we can share with someone else and show God's love through us to them. Can you remember to do that? You can share an, a lick off your ice cream cone if you want to, but maybe not. You could share your candy. You could share some Halloween candy. That would be good. All right, let's pray. Dear God, help us to always share your love with things that we have to others. Amen.
Let us go to God in prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to connect with us in our minds and our hearts through the Scripture and the preaching today. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, as we meet you today, God, we ask your Holy Spirit to come upon us and reveal yourself in us by setting aside anything that hinders us in our minds and our hearts to hear your message clearly. So God, please be with us in a special way. Silence any voice but your own in us today and allow us to know your voice and your message. In Jesus Christ, I pray, and all the people said, Amen. The Old Testament scripture, Isaiah records God using a ruler named Cyrus to do God's will among the nations. What is interesting in this prophecy is that God uses a ruler that does not know God on a relational or devotional level. In a way, showing that God of Jacob and Israel is a sovereign ruler and only this God is to be paid homage or worshipped. So listen to Isaiah as we hear the prophecy and God revealing God's power, taking God's rightful place among the nations. So listen for the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their robes and to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I give you a title, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. In our gospel scripture found in Matthew, the Pharisees and elders, we have been tracking Matthew in Matthew 22, so the Pharisees and elders, chief priests, have been pursuing Jesus to trap him in misspoken words through the question crafted by these officials. And they want to get a wrongful religious practice to see if they can uncover and then to prosecute him and punish him catching him in the misspoken word or idea. Jesus handles the Pharisees' question by about Rome's payment of taxes, and they also, not without the knowledge of who they are. So listen to the dialogue from the Gospel of Matthew. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show difference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. 
and they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? And they answered, Caesar's. Then he said to them, therefore give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Hear what the Spirit of God says to the church. It was a Sunday morning. Singers were prayerfully getting ready to lead singing. The baptismal font shaped in a baptistry filled with warm water, big enough to immerse a person fully. The singing, the singing is sung, the scripture was read and preached, and now it was time for the baptism. And in this particular baptism scene, the pastor with a tie tucked in between the two buttons on his white shirt motions to the confirmant or the person who desires to be baptized into the tank making sure they do not fall on the watery stairs as the person descends into the watery grave. Through that, through the Holy Spirit, transcends physical presence, but symbolically a grave that washes away sin, past, present, and future sins, through the sacrifice and the blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus Christ. The pastor asked the question, what is your good confession? Or in our tradition, who is your Lord and Savior? The confirmand says, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. With the confirmands pinching their nose, the pastor gently immerses them into the water where the physical and the spiritual collide and mix and with the transcendence in and through the sign and seal of grace and new life as God does the work beginning at birth through this time in history to draw this person to follow and know Jesus Christ. Some said our siblings gave their life to Jesus. Not just a moment, but daily seeking, learning, and seeking to follow Jesus the rest of their life. Whatever hardship, testing, or cultural shifts happen. They give to God things that are God's. Not things, but devotion, worship. And financial resources, not out of manipulation, but out of the need to see God's love back through the discipline of worship. Choosing to follow Christ's life long and giving of their time and talents and their gifts. In a song, we will sing the amazing grace, acknowledging the sins and the chains that are developed in sin, are broken through the blessings of baptism through choosing to live and give to God your very self and the things that are God's. The Pharisees, those of the religious law, keeping seeks to trap Jesus by seeing if he would trip up on the teaching that knelt, that dealt with how a disciple should respond to a culture mandated to pay taxes. Jesus' respond is this, give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Our question may be, what are the things of God's? What are the things of God to be given of ours? Maybe the question that we need to ask is what can't be given from us? 
to Christ. If we look at Christ and we look at the plan of salvation, God gives God's only Son for the sins of the world. So is there anything that God cannot ask of followers? To give. Time, talent, resources. Since today and right now is all we know and affirm, what we, give, what we give, what will you give to the Lord right now? What commitments or time or financial resources will you give to or, or plan to give in your following Jesus? What have you designated in your mind and heart as the Lord's? Pharisees had the law. Jesus desires our love from the heart for God revealed in Jesus alone. This love instead of the love teaches us to follow through and set priorities in our relationships with Jesus' vision and mission for the church, the community, and our individual lives. So what have you set aside in your own heart and mind, how do you determine to serve from your life that God has called you to? At the end of the day, Jesus says to serve. At the end of the day, Jesus calls us to give of ourself, our time, our talents, and our resources, because why? We declare that all is owned and possessed by God in our heart and mind. And if we believe that, then we need to follow through as followers of Christ to determine what is God's in our life. What have we designated in our life That follows through on the confession that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. Jesus Christ died for all of the world and you. What are you inspired to give from your own life? Do you hang on to things in your past or you can't get over something in your struggle allows your faith to waver in the promise of God through Christ. So what is your good confession? What is your commitment to Jesus? And what does Jesus want to do through your devotion your time, and financial gifts. Glory be to the Eternal Father, to the Redeemer, and to the Sustainer. Amen.
stay standing, let us affirm our faith in the brief statement of faith excerpt in the bulletin, answering the question, who do you trust in? We trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. We trust in God the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, and to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. Amen. Please be seated. Please join your spirit with mine as we pray a prayer of intercession together for the church, for the world, the nation, and our loved ones. Please pray with me. God is interceding each and every hour for your people. We offer these prayers today. We pray for the church and the world. Lead all disciples to engage culture, not with damaging emotion and self-righteousness, but with curiosity and seeking to understand an opposing opinion. Equip us with a love of listening, yet pointing toward Jesus Christ, asking if we have the hard conversations and shifting cultural norms. Give a discerning spirit to the session and its elders as we seek your will today in our stated meeting. We pray for the world where the Afghans desire healing from grief over 2,000 people killed in an earthquake. Protect all who are in the Gaza strips as bombs rain all around them. Bring peace between Israel and Hamas. May their guns be beat into plowshares and their ammunitions into pruning hooks. Make a time that fulfills Isaiah's prophecy that one day nation shall not lift up violence against another. Let us not learn war anymore. We offer our nation and its citizens in the war zone. We pray for Chicago and the people of Chicago that face a migrant crisis. Be with the area churches and those in politics, not to ignore the crisis or the people, even though it's a political convention host city. We pray that through the political campaigns, we may discern the candidates you desire and act on the values of Christ in each person's conscience. Lay a cover of protection over our military, those who serve in this way. Be with the families as they wait for their loved ones to get home. Protect and give wisdom to public safety agencies and first responders. We pray for our community. Give wisdom and counsel for the Aiken Planning Commission as it decides uh, decisions are made in Graniteville. Increase giving to those who are hungry and have no way to feed themselves. Alert us to electronic scams that are found in emails and texts and communication. Let us question before we click 
and verify before we support. We pray for our loved ones who face feelings of grief, such as the Bradhams, Legrands, Jollies, Hare, Pethix, Lewis, Edwards, Clifford, Sherman, Anise, and Scott's family, and, and Kelly. We pray for the health concerns that we seek uh, that people be able to cope with and improve for Bill and Eleanor, Anthony, Jeff and Samuel, Mike, Pat, Mike, Luke, Court, Carrie, Mary Louise, Leslie, Dot and Felder, Gail, Phil and Emily, Lois and Susan. We pray for the comfort and coping of Ethel and Leona and Steve and Linda, Anita and Bob and Bob A at Benton House. We offer Lisa as she is home and recovering from surgery. We offer Edmund as he continues to heal and rehab from open heart surgery. We pray for the recovery of Donna and her rehab of her knee. We offer Sarah and Barbara for their healing. We pray for healing and comfort for Doug, Ray, and Lynn. Comfort for Peg. Be with Jim and Shirley in a special way and all homebound members. We offer all prayers and concerns that cannot be said aloud, but said in silence to God now. God, continue to show your faith in our lives as we accompany our faith with actions. May we know your presence as we walk this life together with your Holy Spirit. Give us the strength and faith we need to rest in your presence and trust in your ways. Lead us to be open to the needs around us so to respond with intercession and hope in difficult times. Bless us all the days until our healing finally comes faith renewed, and that we see you face to face. In Christ's name we pray, amen. In your bulletin, in your bulletin there is what they call spooky to be hungry, kind of campaign if you will, that is this coming <coughs> Sunday for trunk or treat. And I wanted to read this, this little statistic here that we have in our bulletin it says because of one in three people in this the CSRA our food insecure mission and membership team has asked that you help us scare away hunger this month we will be having food collection boxes for Golden Harvest Food Bank in the North X which is in the uh, lobby area right before the entrance of the church uh, October the the 29th, which is today, 22nd today, and the 29th when Trunk or Treat. So you get, there'll be a place in the back there to be able to bring canned goods and non-perishable food items. Uh, or you can bring them on the 29th from 4 to 6 with the Trunk or Treat on next Sunday as the church experiences that. And if you need to know how to participate in that, please talk to Anthony as we go forward. Thank you.
me. Gracious God, we take this moment and we give you thanks. We give thanks with our life, with our time, our talents, and our financial gifts. God, we thank you on how we live our life to witness to your resurrection and the joy within. God, we thank you so much for the generosity of all people giving of all of themselves to do your vision and mission here at South Aiken. God, we give you thanks for every minute, every hour that they give. God, please bless us, God, and allow us to connect with the prayer that you taught us long ago, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. here and give of yourself give of your time your talents and your financial gifts as you continue to bless god's kingdom here at south aiken now the grace and mercy of the lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be upon you now and forever amen <laughs>